I see here, it says you signed the birth certificate, too. Yep, How Ron, did that happen? Pressure. He has your nose. He has your head. This, 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 that. This, this, that. I'm just like, uh, uh, let me just be a man. Let me sign the birth certificate. So about 2 o'clock in the morning, I wake up, and Miss Williams is no longer in the room. How long was she gone? It was at least an hour or two. You believed at that moment that something was going on. For sure. I was going through some difficulty, feeling unwanted by my husband, and I felt Mr. Freeman was giving me more attention than my husband was. Ms. Halsinger begins with a request for a DNA test to prove Mr. May is the father of her two-year-old son, Gabriel, claiming Mr. May has been MIA in his fatherly duties. Mr. May fires back, disputing his paternity due to some fishy circumstances around the signing of the birth certificate. The courtroom's buzzing, and we're just getting started. What's next? Just wait for the drama to unfold. Ms. Halsinger, you petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that the defendant is the father of your two-year-old son, Gabriel. You say Mr. May has abandoned his responsibilities, and he will get the truth today. You can't make this stuff up. Mr. May spills the beans about feeling pressured to accept paternity and put his name on the birth certificate. Meanwhile, Ms. Halsinger recounts their whirlwind romance that started on a chat line, quickly escalating from idle chats to a full-blown relationship drama. You'll want to stick around because the plot thickens. Mr. May, you claim you pressured into signing the birth certificate and now you are stuck with a woman foolishly believes you are her child's father. So you're not doing anything for this child no, right now. No, you I'm out of the child's life right now. The child's two years old. Yes, Your Honor. So, you agree? Nothing, Miss Halsinger? He hasn't done anything for my son at all. Hold your horses. It gets wilder. The focus shifts to the fateful night they believe Gabriel was conceived. Ms. Halsinger admits they didn't use protection, and Mr. May initially seemed on board with fatherhood. However, his doubts start creeping in due to Ms. Halsinger's questionable interactions with other dudes. Just when you thought it was complicated enough, there's more mischief on the horizon. Take me to the night in question where all the chatting turned into paternity court material. Yeah, and it was a late night. She was one of the young ladies who was on at the other end of the line and left me a message. I left her a message and we ended up hooking up. Do you remember that first night, Miss Halsinger? Yes, ma'am. Did you use protection? No, Your Honor. Can you feel the tension? Mr. May details a suspicious encounter involving another man at Ms. Hulsinger's residence, deepening his paternity doubts. The fiery exchange about Ms. Hulsinger's honesty and the trustworthiness of her paternity claims adds fuel to the fire. As the accusations fly, get ready because the courtroom is about to turn up the heat even more. That came at a time when I was over a house. One time we was upstairs in a room and beep, 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 outside, didn't leave. So she was asking me, was I ready to leave? Got to go downstairs and I'm got to, about to go out the back door. She told me to go out the front door. Open up the back door, there's a gentleman right there. And he asked me, was I there for Mrs. Host? I told him I wasn't there for Mrs. Hosting. I was there for one of her family members and I proceeded to walk on out the door while she hid behind the refrigerator. Fasten your seatbelts for more turbulence. Mr. May mentions rumors and incriminating text messages messages that further ignite his skepticism. Despite the swirling doubts, their tumultuous relationship trudges on, affecting his involvement with the child. And guess what? It's about to get even bumpier. Bottom line is you were hearing rumors, saw messages on her phone. Guys knocking at the back door, Jan. Guys knocking at the back door. This is all while she's pregnant and you all are still seeing each other. Yes. And so you thinking to yourself, you might not be the only father here. So when you actually went into labor? Yes, ma'am. He wasn't there for me. My family member going to get him so he could come up there and see my son. Oh, so they went to go get him. And I yes, had my doubt. Here's where it gets dicey. The discussion turns to Mr. May's pressure-filled decision to sign the birth certificate, bringing up big legal and emotional stakes. Admitting to his shaky decision amidst family pressures and emotional manipulation, he opens up a can of worms. Eyes peeled, folks. The next revelation is a doozy. In your court papers, I see here, it says you signed the birth certificate, too. Yes, How Ron, did that happen? Pressure. So her, oh. I, I'm getting, he has your nose, he has your head. What are you gonna do now? This, 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 that. This, this, that. And I'm just like, uh, uh, uh. Let me just be a man. Let me sign the birth certificate. If it's mine, I'm gonna deal with it. Did you know when you signed that birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. That you would be now yes, Your the Honor. legal father of this child? Yes, Your Honor. This is heart-wrenching. Ms. Holsinger passionately insists that Mr. May recognize paternity privately, despite his public doubts. This intense moment highlights the emotional toll on both parties, and especially on Gabriel. As emotions run high, the courtroom braces for a bombshell that could change everything. This photo was submitted to the court. It is Mr. May, little beautiful baby, Gabriel. I don't 
don't see a lot of doubt in this photo. Cause it ain't. Cause he know that's ba that baby is his, Your Honor. And it's really hurt me that he's not stepping up to be a man. My son and needs his father. And you know, and I know I'm part of the blame. Cause I know I wasn't in a relationship with him. That, you know, I was doing my own thing too. You won't believe this twist. Out of the blue, Mr. May drops a bombshell about a call from another man claiming he's Gabriel's dad, sending shockwaves through the courtroom, entangling the narrative with new allegations of Ms. Holsinger's romantic escapades. Keep your eyes on the screen, because what comes next is pivotal. Who is this person? I told you he was a stalker. He just pops up anytime I was moving. Your Honor. Oh, that's the same no, guy from yes, the refrigerator? Yes. So you're saying it's a different, different guy from guy, the refrigerator incident? Totally no. different guy. No, Total it's the different same guy. guy. If he stole your phone, how did he know to call Mr. May? Because I told him, look, I'm pregnant. I don't need this in my life, because he knew that I was not trying to mess with him. Grab your popcorn. This part's juicy. Ms. Holsinger pulls out a calendar, aiming to pinpoint the conception date linked to her rendezvous with Mr. May. But the court scrutinizes the calendar's accuracy against her admissions of other liaisons around the same time. As the plot thickens, the courtroom awaits the crucial DNA result with bated breath. You've presented me with a calendar the day you were intimate with Mr. May, and that would be January 26th. I believe I conceived on the 28th. Were you intimate with anyone else around these days? Uh, maybe a week between. Which week? The week of the 13th. It has been determined by this court. Mr. May, you are the father. Can you believe what just unfolded? The episode starts with Judge Lake settling into her chair and the court clerk announcing the case of Pierce versus Koval. Here we have Mr. Pierce dragging his ex fiance Ms. Koval to court, demanding a paternity test to confirm if he really is the father of one year old Julian. Doubts are flying everywhere because of Ms. Koval's little confession about a past fling during conception. Stay tuned because Ms. Koval is about to spill some serious tea. It's a case of Pierce versus Koval. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Mr. Pierce, you are summoning your ex fiance. Say Miss Cavell for a paternity test to prove that her one-year-old son Julian is not your son. Claim Miss Cavell deceived you into believing you were father, and it wasn't until Julian was sick old when she finally confessed she had cheated, and you may not be the father. The air is thick with tension. Miss Cavell steps up, admits her slip, but stands her ground that Mr. Pierce is definitely Julian's dad. She's a mix of nerves and defiance, regretting her mistake, but fighting to prove she's been truthful about who the daddy is. Brace yourselves. Mr. Pierce is about to. To take us on a roller coaster ride through his past. Ms. Cavell, you admit you cheated around the window of conception, but you still say you have no doubt Pierce is your child's father. How do you feel about being dragged into court today? I'm a little upset. I want to prove that he's the father. I want to show him that I have been telling the truth. I know I made a mistake, but I've been paying for it every single day since. Did that just drop a bombshell or what? Mr. Pierce opens up about his trust issues, fueled by a cocktail of past betrayals and present doubts. He recounts tales of past deceptions, where he was duped into playing playing dad, painting a picture of why he's got this nagging doubt gnawing at him about little Julian. What's coming next is a gut punch revelation about how he uncovered Ms. Cobble's betrayal. You believe this was truly necessary because you have doubt. You know, it's happened to me in the past before. I just have this doubt and it's killing our family, it's killing the relationship I do have with the kids and it's, it hurts. It, it truly hurts. I can see that it really does. And you have an older child together and this is destroying your family. And it's happened to me before, I mean, going back 10 years Years ago, you know, I've had the same thing happen to me. A young woman get pregnant, I was 18 years old, but she told me at the time that it may not be my child. You won't see this twist coming. We dive deeper as Mr. Pierce recounts the fateful moment Ms. Cavell decided to come clean. Amidst a seemingly perfect phase in their relationship, she dropped the bombshell of her infidelity, shattering Mr. Pierce's world and cranking up his doubts to maximum overdrive. The plot thickens as we delve into when exactly this cheating scandal unfolded. Around Valentine's Day, around her birthday, we got engaged. I proposed to her. She was pregnant with Julian at the time. It was after he was born. I don't know what came over me, but I was just like, you know, we're doing really good right now. We're whatever. If there's anything you got to tell me, you know, let's get it out the air right now. I'm not going to get mad because we're so in a good place right now. It was like, you know, here's your free pass. She told me, you know, that she had cheated on me back. This is where things get sticky. They break down the nitty gritty timeline of when Julian was conceived and when Ms. Cavill had her indiscretion. Turns out the timing is as suspect as a thriller novel, perfectly lining up with Julian's arrival. What unfolds next is the heart wrenching impact of the these revelations on their family life. When was he born? May 13th. Explain to the court about when you had that moment where you fell short and cheated. It was in September. I don't remember the exact date. Um, I just lost a baby. Early September, middle September? It was early.
early September. All right. Did you say the end of August, beginning of September? Somewhere around that. Okay, time. that could take us back in here. Okay. So you cheated right around here. If you count the months, that's looking like the window of conception. Grab your popcorn. This drama isn't over yet. The tension between Mr. Pierce and Ms. Cobble has escalated to daily bickering, turning their home into a battlefield of doubts and accusations. Mr. Pierce is haunted by the sight of Julian, tortured by uncertainty, and struggling to connect with the boy. But hang in there, because the paternity test results are about to make a grand entrance. What's your relationship been like since all of this has transpired? It's not there. It's just been going downhill ever since this has happened. We bicker and fight all the time, and now it's And so this marriage ultimately is pretty because of this situation. Correct. Took back the ring and everything just because I can't do it. The results come back that he's not mine. I don't think we can save the relationship. So the stakes are very high, Miss Cavell. Ready for the grand reveal? The courtroom holds its breath as the paternity test results are unveiled. With the man you cheated with, you said no. The lie detector determined that was the truth. You were asked if during your relationship with Mr. Pierce, had you had sexual relations with any other man besides the one you admitted to? You said no. The lie detector determined that was the truth. In a jaw-dropping reveal, Miss Williams drops a bombshell about a family secret where the defendant, whom she believed to be her father, shook the foundations of their family by confessing that he might not be her biological father due to a cheating incident involving her mother. This startling admission has propelled her and her sister into court, determined to debunk his claim and assert their paternity. The stage is set for an even more gripping confrontation next. Ms. Williams, five years ago, the defendant, who you believed was your father, revealed a shocking family secret that your mother cheated and you are not his daughter. You and your sister are in court to prove him wrong. Mr. Scales, you are a retired semi-pro football player and claim it was during one of your away games that Elisa's mother cheated on you with one of your teammates. You won't believe what's coming next. Mr. Scales takes the spotlight, sharing a tale soaked in betrayal as he recounts the circumstances under which he suspects his former partner was unfaithful. Detailing a night of an away game, he tells of how she vanished from the hotel room, sparking his suspicions of her infidelity, which he believes led to the conception of Alisa with another man. What unfolds next will leave you hanging on the edge of your seat. In 1983, we had an away game in Pensacola, and I took Miss Williams with me. We checked into a hotel, and I went to bed early because I worked that day, and it was a Friday. So about 2 o'clock in the morning, I wake up, and Miss Williams is no longer in the room. How long was she gone? It was at least an hour or two. You believed at that moment that something was going on. For sure. As the courtroom buzzes with anticipation, the plot thickens with the introduction of a crucial piece of evidence, the birth certificate. Elisa is listed as Mr. Scales' daughter, despite his insistence that he never signed it, throwing a wrench into the legal acknowledgement of paternity and raising serious questions about the document's legitimacy. Just wait until you hear the mother's explosive testimony next. It's a doozy! She's presented to the court, her birth certificate. You're listed as father. I could be listed as father, but I never signed it. You did not sign it. At that point, did you have a question of her paternity? I could be this child's father. That's correct. Everything in me feels like I'm his daughter. Him. How I, was it presented to you specifically? Let me show y'all something and tell y'all something. I do what I want to do. Exactly. Right. That's of the course. problem. As harsh as Mr. Scales is in this moment, and I do believe his delivery is harsh. The atmosphere charges with tension as Belinda, the mother, storms into the courtroom. In a confrontation that could rival any daytime drama, she challenges Mr. Scales, revealing that yes, she did have an affair, but it wasn't on the infamous night he mentioned. She admits to a rendezvous with another man, but insists it didn't immediately turn romantic. This confession complicates the narrative even further. Buckle up, because the DNA test results are about to turn everything upside down. And you know you are lying. Hi, ma'am. Miss Williams, I just want to ask you, do you believe Mr. Scales has any reason to doubt that Elisa is his biological daughter? There's no reason. If he was gonna doubt a child, he should doubt Tundra. When I had the affair with the person in question, when I met I the person my case, Your Honor. in question, I didn't even have any kids from him. Mr. Scales, you are her father. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> 
Can you believe what just unfolded? Ms. Shomo drops a bombshell confession about a weekend fling with a co-worker while still hitched to Mr. Kleckler. She spills the beans on being intimate with both men over the same wild weekend, casting doubt over the paternity of her 11-month-old son, Theseus. If you thought that was a jaw-dropper, just wait for what's coming up next. Ms. Shomo, you confess you had a weekend fling with a co-worker while married to the defendant, Mr. Kleckler. Now, because you admit to being intimate with both men during the same two-day period, you now say you have no idea who fathered your 11-month-old son, Theseus. Hold on to your popcorn. This part is a doozy. Mr. Freeman, the said co-worker, steps into the spotlight, admitting he might be the biological dad. And, get this, he wants full custody if the DNA test swings his way. This twist throws a whole new layer of drama into the mix. Not just about who the daddy is, but who gets to raise the kiddo. The next bit is going to ratchet up the tension even further. You are that co-worker, and you're the second possible biological father. You state that if it's determined you are indeed the child's biological father, you want full custody. What made you stray from your marriage and possibly conceive two children outside of your relationship? I was going through some difficulty, feeling unwanted by my husband, and I felt Mr. Freeman was giving me more attention than my husband was. Did that twist catch you off guard? Here's Ms. Shomo explaining why she strayed from her marriage with Mr. Kleckler. Turns out, it's a classic tale of feeling neglected and finding solace in the arms of a more attentive co-worker, Mr. Freeman. She lays bare the emotional turmoil and decisions leading up to this courtroom showdown. Buckle up, because the emotional roller coaster is just getting started. How did Mr. Freeman get in the pink? Me and him were friends, Your Honor. He just showed me more affection than my husband did. Mr. Freeman, when you met Ms. Shomo, you knew she was a married woman? Yes, Your Honor. Saying that he was cheating, you know what I'm saying, talking to other other females or whatever. So, you know, so we started conversating and talking and, and it went from there. Yeah. And so when she got pregnant, did she tell you? A couple months in pre pregnancy. You'll need to see this to believe it. As little Theseus gets older, Ms. Shomo starts noticing features that might just make Mr. Freeman the likely dad. This period of doubt and the ensuing scrutiny are pivotal as they lead to the quest for a definitive DNA paternity test. The revelations in the next scene are going to turn everything on its head. In the first stages of your son's life, beautiful brown skin and hair, and I'll I can see that when you had him, you said, he looks like me. And then as he got older, you just didn't see Mr. Kleckler in him. Right. You said that Mr. Freeman and you used protection when you all were together. Yes. And yet, was it even more surprising to you when you started to see or feel like was looking like Mr. Freeman because you all used protection? Here's the clincher everyone's been waiting for. The courtroom is thick with anticipation. As Judge Lake gears up to unveil the DNA results, the air is electric with the stakes sky high especially for little Theseus, whose future hangs in the balance. Strap in, because what's about to be revealed is nothing short of a game changer. Before I read the results, I want to ask you, Mr. Kleckler, what are you hoping for today? He's mine. I'm just going to take care of him like he's like I do my other kids. It's not going to change either way how I treat the kid. Uh, it's just going to change financial-wise. That way I can provide for my girls. Two little girls that's his brother. He got another little boy that's his brother. I've been in all their lives. They know me. I'm not going to treat any of the kids any different. Do you want to repair your relationship? with your wife? I would love to, Your Honor. The envelope, please. It has been determined that the biological father is Mr. Freeman. Yes. Congratulations, y'all. So appreciate it. Do what I got to Thank do. You. That's all I got to say. I'm really relieved because my son needs a father in his life.